This is a video on how using an iPad can make you smarter. Okay, maybe more accurately, it will help you choose the right iPad and apps, whatever you are learning, studying or planning, the getting smarter bit is entirely up to you. So I'm a fan of great tech ideas and systems that can make life a little easier. And so I thought it was about time I focused on you students out there. And when I say students, you don't have to be in college for this to be about you. I reckon we should all count ourselves as lifelong learners. So let's talk about what I think is the best iPad setup for students the apps to use, and the tips that make the iPad a game changer for your studying life. Across note-taking, digital planning, and setup ideas, it's time to turn in that assignment. Another brilliant study-based metaphors. And on that note, actually, thanks, brilliant, for sponsoring this video. This is just getting worse, isn't it? First, which iPad to choose? Okay, it's been a very long time since I was actually a student, but man, I wish I'd discovered the joys of the iPad back then. It would have been my perfect study companion. And well, I guess the first challenge to that idea would be, but aren't iPads expensive? And well, yeah, that is true. The cost of entry could well be an issue for many. But I think with a bit of careful decision-making, Apple do have still some great options that can be affordable and then actually remain future-proofed so that you get your money's worth. So before we jump into how to use it and all those apps that we might wanna use on it, let's talk about the iPad to actually get as a student. Now I'd argue that for most people, the iPad Pro is just overkill. Unless, like I did back in 2018, you are trying it as a laptop replacement or you do a bunch of hardcore graphics work or rendering on it, you probably don't need one. I think the overkill argument also easily applies to the iPad Air for many. Sure, it's targeted for more general use, it's light and portable, but at that price point, I still think it's probably not what you need. So instead of all these options, I've been testing out the recent iPad 10th gen. Now, the reason this model is so interesting is the balance of price, power, and perks it's offering. Nice, my first study at college paying off English literature. And by the way, if you think the iPad is never gonna be a laptop replacement, on that comment earlier, you're absolutely right. And you're looking at it the wrong way. So use the iPad properly and you will realize why it's so great, particularly for students. So let's do a sexy little unboxing of this 10th gen iPad, and I'll tell you why it's actually a secret killer choice. So the iPad 10th gen was released in October 2022, but could still be the sweet spot for most users. Okay, sure, if you wanna keep things super portable, an iPad mini could be amazing, a definite Kindle and pocket notebook replacement. But for more involved workflows like planning and note taking, it could just be too small for you. And I reckon the fact that the iPad 10 is, at the time of filming this at least, still the only iPad to have that landscape orientated camera, it makes itself the only viable option for many people. Apple also modernized the design from iPad 9, removed the home button and added the liquid retina display. And so I'd say it was a great budget friendly option with all the modern perks. It's slim, light, feels rigid and strong. And with the A14 chip, admittedly downclocked from the iPad Air 4. It has great power and on battery life, this thing just absolutely stomps over every other option in the range at the moment. The 10th gen won't support stage manager functions though, or external display options like you get on the Air or the Pro. So go to the Air if you plan on using your iPad with an external monitor a lot. Also, if you care about the little technicalities like a slightly slower charger and data transfer speeds through the USB-C port on the iPad 10 compared to the Air 4, check out a refurbished iPad Air 4. It's essentially the same money, just without a few of the features like landscape camera. But let's be honest, this is an iPad 9th gen with a few extra welcome gimmicks like 12 megapixel camera, 4K video, Wi-Fi 6 and 5G, and so on and so on. See? It may be a secret killer choice, right? Let me know your choice of the bunch in the comments. And while you're there, click on that thumb and boost this wee video for me. Cheers. Okay, so the other part of this kit we shouldn't forget about is accessories. And I'd say that if you have an iPad, you have to price in the Apple Pencil. 
It's the accessory that makes the iPad worth it. Trust me, when you get the hang of it, you'll dump the notebooks for the flexible advantages of drawing, note-taking, and annotating documents that mean you can keep your handwriting but gain the digital filing and organization I think we all need for studies. So yeah, if you can afford it and money is no issue, definitely go for the second generation pencil for the wireless magnetic charging, the double tap controls on notes and artistic apps. It's great, but hey, I've been trying out this, the new Apple Pencil USB-C, which is at a fraction of the price at 79 UK pounds currently compared to around 200 for the second gen. So this is a great way to add some pencil functions without the costs. It has a very satisfying clicky opening to charge from the iPad via wire. It's a similar design to the second gen and has the same magnetic attachment. And whilst it doesn't charge there, it does put the pencil to sleep to preserve battery life. Okay, let's be honest, it's a little crap to charge this by wire in 2024, but then again, 79 quid is much less than around 200. So it's your call. And sure, you could try the magnetic keyboard folio case for the 10th gen if you want to add portable keyboard options. It's a great two-part design, but I recommend seeing and feeling it in person to decide if you actually want to carry the weight around. I also find the keyboard can be a little bit annoying to kind of get knocked off sometimes, and it starts to push the iPad towards true laptop heavy territory. It also doesn't have backlighting on the buttons, so I wonder if it's the best choice. Let's be honest, a $250 keyboard may not make sense for most people, and if you have a laptop, don't bother, and maybe spend your cash on a nice low profile mechanical keyboard like the Unify Air 60, or maybe the Keychron K3 Pro. These offer you a lovely, paired typing experience when you need it from around $80 and you can focus on tools like Scribble to convert your handwriting to text or just use the iPad more for written notes, reading documents, watching content, editing presentations and images, sketching, digital planning. You get the idea. I also paired my iPad to the folding Microsoft Arc 2 mouse for a really low profile travel pointer. Links in the description to all those things if you need it. Okay, I'd say it was time we went to app school. The apps and setup tips I think every student should be trying out to make the most of the iPad. I actually wanna take a moment to tell you about one of my favorite apps, today's sponsor, Brilliant. Now, as someone with an arts background, now working in the tech world, it's pretty easy for me to feel behind the curve in my understanding of those big subjects we need, maths, data science, and computer science, all skills for creative types that I'd love to improve. Well. The best free and easy way to build a daily learning habit to future-proof yourself that doesn't cost thousands or take years and years of schooling is with Brilliant, and it works beautifully on the iPad. So if you don't know by now, Brilliant.org is one of the best ways to learn maths, data science, and computer science interactively with thousands of fun lessons, from basic to advanced topics, AI to hypothesis testing with new lessons added monthly. Now I'm personally currently doing the data analysis fundamentals course. Within a few quick lessons, I've been able to analyze real data, draw interesting conclusions from it. Uh, it's the kind of analysis that forms the backbone of a lot of my content, you know, looking at my YouTube studio. I'm also enjoying the How Technology Works course as a great way to brush up on what actually makes a password good great, or how those YouTube algorithms work. <laughs> yeah, it's a low pressure, interactive way to be a student again in my own time, and you can learn anywhere, anytime. So definitely give Brilliant a try. It really is good. And the best thing is you can get started for free for 30 days and the first 200 of you to use my link will get 20% off an annual plan by visiting brilliant.org forward slash better creating or click the link in the description. Brilliant, that's a terrible joke, but brilliant. When you first get an iPad, I reckon it's a great idea to delete any of the native apps you won't use, clean up the home screen, and get some good vibes with your chosen wallpaper. Calm iPad, calm mind, right? Now, if you really want to go the full hog, you could do what I did and semi-hack the iOS with shortcuts to create a minimal look with my icon and cover packs. But you can watch my iPhone and iPad customization video next if you wanna learn more about those and that process. Now, app 101 on my list has to be GoodNotes. 
And with the release of GoodNote 6, it's a great moment to be downloading it. Of all the paid options on my list, hashtag not sponsored, this one is a real no-brainer. I really think you won't regret it. Note-taking and digital planning with the iPad was the main thing that completely changed my workflow when I got one. Now, what's super useful is the ability to be able to organize your notes into notebooks and folders. And in GoodNote 6, there are some really cool new AI features that allow you to do things like spell correct handwriting. It copies your writing style and replaces the world. It's pretty cool, like, you know, first ever of those. But my favorite feature has been around for ages, the lasso tool that allows you to select anything on the page and then move it. How many times have you wished you could do that in your paper notebooks? Apps like GoodNotes, Notability, or even the amazing drawing app Procreate, just get it if you like drawing, are also great options to drop PDFs into. So if you would like to have the benefits of a paper planner with the advantages of a digital world, Downloading some planner templates online or even in-app on things like GoodNotes is a great way to turn your iPad into your planner for the year. I'm actually personally working on some digital planner templates of my own for the iPad at the moment, so make sure to join the Better Creating email list in the description and I'll let you know when they're ready. Now you'll also spot my Notion organization templates there too if you're interested. And yes, okay, I'm biased, but make sure to download Notion onto your iPad. Still the most customizable and adaptable workspace for putting your project plans in, to-do lists, goals, habit tracking, and whatever else you need to do. With the right templates, it works fine on the iPad for quick capture of ideas, but I usually then go back to my Notion Life OS system on the desktop each day to keep track of my projects and assignments for this channel. Now, if you like the Notion aesthetic, but not the interface, maybe check out something like Minimalist or Todoist for two simple and super functional iPad to-do list apps. Uh, the widgets for Minimalist are particularly great, as is the bonus built-in Pomodoro counter that comes with the app, a great way to get started and get focused on your next bit of work. And get to know Apple Notes. It's got some great updates in iOS 17 and is still made by design for a device like the iPad and well worth mastering. Now, I still swear by journaling as one of my best ways to keep learning and growing. Some notable mentions include One Journal and my favorite, Zen Journal. It's a super simple and calm to use thing that you should put on there. So it uses hashtags to organize stuff. Another super cool find in this area is Lake, a lovely little app for when you are feeling a little overwhelmed with those deadlines and social calendar pressures. It combines coloring and mindfulness into a journal. Now I'd say Google Drive and Google Cow remain my go-to options for organizing my files and my time. It stays backed up to the cloud and keeps the files off the iPad. Beyond this, I have to add Kindle, the Readwise Reader, as a great way to browse and gather notes and clippings as I go. And of course, a bunch of places to have fun. Let's be honest, what most of us use the iPad for, Netflix and YouTube. If you want to learn more about the apps and ideas that can truly take you and your iPad to the next level, I recommend watching one of my other iPad videos on the channel. And if you are serious about how you can continue to level up how you learn, get organized, and turn that knowledge into more great results, I've got a whole load of videos on how I developed and used a second brain to transform my messy brain into an organized and successful business that actually changed my life. Big claims, right? Well, make sure you're subscribed here and watch one of these videos next on those very subjects. iPad joy and building a second brain. I wish you all some super happy studies with whatever you're working on. And with that, well, I'd better get back to creating. See ya.